doing karaoke with Joe. No, continue. I love it. <laughs> just going I thought I was going to marry Davy Jones at some point, but it didn't work out. <laughs> Davy Jones a pirate? No, Davy Jones was one of the monkeys. Alex, would you oh. co-host me again? Or I guess you don't even need to. Never mind. Hey, Enrique Shruley. We haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm Can back. Can you see? And yeah, with ever. my left eye, with my right eye, I still see blurry, but hey, got my Walgreens glasses until the 22nd when I'm, I'm going to talk to my doctor and see what's going on, if he can fix it. So, so there. Yay for Walgreens. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Anne. Hi. Good morning, Michael. Sorry, I missed my other folks by name. They, you all popped in at the same time, so I couldn't rattle you off. But welcome, welcome. Good morning. Does anybody have snow right now? Not in Puerto Rico, no. Oh, you're in Puerto Rico? <laughs> yes. Are you going to have snow? Yeah, that makes sense. Is it a normal amount of snow, or are you behind? Like, is it a... <laughs> It's about a normal amount of snow. It, it, we've got uh, warm winds today, so it'll all disappear. So it disappeared here. Yes. Michael is showing his snow. Oh, that's out, pretty. Yeah, out here in the gorge, in the mouth of the Columbia or Columbia, it's uh, winds about 50 to 60 miles an hour, and. Uh, Blowing limbs off trees and things like that. I was, I was driving in our tornado last night. I don't recommend it. Do not recommend it. Ooh. 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 I was screaming. Ken was driving. <laughs> I, yeah, when I was stationed in North Texas, Shepherd, I was in the Air Force. I uh, drove between two. Uh, tornadoes, one on either side of the road, and I was doing a uh, going as fast as the car would go, and the tornadoes were tracking me. It was one of the most nerve-wracking things I've ever had to do. Yeah, it sounds like it's almost like getting struck by lightning now, like tornadoes yeah. are chasing you. Two tornadoes. Yeah. Welcome to the folks who are just hopping on. Good morning from wherever you are. Hello, hello. Okay, just a couple more minutes before we <clears throat> kick off things. Anyone know any good jokes? Okay. <laughs> I don't believe at all. <laughs> what, what did one rabbit say to the other rabbit as they were crossing the road? Up to it. I don't know. I don't speak rabbit. They said hop to it. I think the, the best way to measure that a joke is good is by how many eye rolls it receives. <laughs> you got you got a high count on that one, Bob. Well, good morning to the folks hopping on. For anybody's information, I made that one up. <laughs> no, I would you don't death. today. So we have this guy you can use from there, right? Shmooley's typing jokes in the chat. Oh, Shmooley. Talking about the monkeys, Maggie told me she did not like their music, but after playing their music for an hour, then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. <laughs> Very well played. That's well played, Shmooley. Very well. Good morning to the folks who are just hopping on. We are right at the top of 11. Well, I'm I'm where it's 11 a.m. We're at the top of the hour from wherever hour you're signing in from. Nice to see you all. Um, I am unofficially hosted by, oh, today's host. Here we go. That's me. Hi. This one I'm seeing it underneath. I always get a little bit weird about titles and things, but. Hi. Good to see you. 
Um, I think that today might be a little bit like the substitute classrooms. I think I make some reference to that anytime that I join you all in this capacity. Um, but if we finish our work early, then I think we can leave early. Um, but I, I just have two offerings that I'd like to share with you all. Um, we're in December, as you know, so I'm kind of thinking about end of the year stuff. Um, do you want me to say that out? Not in the chat. Right. Sorry, I'm having a telepathic combo. Okay. Um, and it, it, it didn't work. I'm not psychic until 1 p.m. It turns out. Um, <laughs> so, um, 1 p.m. somewhere. 1 p.m. Uh, right, right. I'm in the wrong country. Um, good morning to the folks who are just coming on. I'm Afia. I use she, her pronouns. I'm calling in from the land of the um, Lenape. No, I was on Lenape land last week. I'm on Lumbi land in what's now called the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And I wanted to share some things with you all today. Um, and before we get started, I just want us to take a deep breath together. I know that over the course of this year, we've shared a lot of time. Um, I should have done math. How many Saturdays, how many hours. We've invested a lot of a lot of breaths, a lot of smiles, a lot of concerns with one another, and I'm giving big thanks that, that we've all had some place to do that. And giving thanks for the folks who brought us um, to these spaces where you have a roof over your head, you have enough technology to tap in, you have a device that you can trust. Um, so I know that it can seem trite to give thanks when things feel tense, but I do want to just name that we're all in a, a shared circle of gratitude when it comes to these kinds of resources. And so just want to say thank you to all the forces and sources who helped supply these things so that we can gather again. Um, I was talking to Rabbi when he, when he asked me if I would um, host today, and I, I was reminded that this time last year I also hosted, I think for one of the first times, and I did a kind of end of year recap of our time here in this particular community. Um, specifically on Saturday service, not, not like the, the clubhouse wouldn't exist yet, but it, what I want to talk about today are all Saturday service things. So if you started coming to Saturday service and now you hop on to the clubhouse or you started on Facebook and now you're here, you've experienced religion outside the box and this community from various vantage points. and. Um, because we are made up of many sides, like each of you are calling in from a different location in the world, different time zones, different identities, we just want to find a way to hold and respect the different ways that you engage in the space and figure out the best way to continue to build together. So that's sort of my intention for today. Um, if it doesn't sound like something you want to do, you can hop off and hop back on in like 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> just like no hard feelings. Not everyone's not always down for reflecting, but you know, I I want you to do what feels good. You know. Um, so I'm gonna take another deep breath. And to start, actually, I'd like um, to just name that this. So after this weekend, we will be fresh in the center of December, and I. Uh, in my personal life here, a lot of people are transitioning. I um, just learned of another elder who transitioned on Thursday. And so uh, it, without that being the case, I know that the holidays are not the easiest time for everyone. And so I'm just naming that. Like, I'm tender. I'm feeling lots of things. And uh, if you are feeling tender also, I hope that you are doing what you need to do to take care of yourself. Um, I wanted to share this small thing. This feels like um, a piece of encouragement that's helped me. Can you all see this um, like meme thing on my screen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, does somebody want to read that for us? This is a 
picture of a tweet. <laughs> you gotta resurrect the deep pain within you and give it a place to live that's not within your body. Let it live in art. Let it live in writing. Let it live in music. Let it be devoured by building brighter connections. Your body is not a coffin for pain to be buried in. Put it somewhere else. Mm. Mm. Nice. Nice. Thanks, Stephen, for reading that. Um, yeah. So this, I'm, I'm thinking a lot about grief, obviously, and that's been a quote that's been helpful. Um, so I'm offering that in case you yourself have some untapped wells that are just kind of laying idle and need need a new place to be. Um, I also am just tossing this into the chat in case it's helpful for folks. There's two resources for um, therapist networks. Um, the first one is National Queer and Trans Network of Mental Health Care Providers. The second one is sort of just a general virtual therapy uh, network. So if you don't have access to those resources, this might be a way to do it. I um, just want to put a plug out for you to get the help you want and deserve. Um, anything else to say on that? I don't want to just brush past. All right. So one of my offerings today comes from one of my teachers, my spiritual teachers. Um, we've been talking a lot about purpose and um, how a, a big question that you'll hear a lot of, especially these days, um, if you're in any kind of like spiritual direction or therapist uh, role, is people saying, can you help me find my purpose? Can you help me find my purpose? And I'm, I've, that's been a question of mine since like, I was a real emo kid. So since like second grade, I was like, what am I here? What am I supposed to do? Um, and he said something really profound. He said that all living things all the things in the created world actually have the same purpose. He said that your purpose, also, I wrote these, I had to write these backwards with flipped letters because of the way Zoom turns the camera. So if it, if it becomes illegible, that's why. <laughs> so I, I receive your grace. <laughs> um, he said that our, the purposes are to either absorb energy, transform energy, transfer energy or exchange energy so that every relationship you're in, every space you're in, your job, with your family, your partner, if it's not one of these things that's happening on the energy spectrum, then what you're doing is not purposeful. And this helped me a lot. Actually, I, Rabbi brought up the other day, I was working at a hospital here um, and it was not a good fit. And when I got this list, I was able to decide, like, right, I need to leave because I have no idea what kind of energetic relationship I'm having with this place. It just feels like a drain. And so, <clears throat> would you repeat those? Uh, would you repeat that? Abs yeah, absolutely. Um, that, so, the name, I mean, just read it. Just so reading those things. Sure. So your purpose is either to absorb energy to transform energy, to transfer energy, or to exchange energy. So for example, when I was thinking about being uh, the facilitator for today, I was thinking, okay, this is a, it's, it's more than one thing. I'm going to exchange some energy because I've got this offering to give. And I'm also going to, um, absorb some energy because I trust that you all show up with an intention of love and community care and I, I need some of that right now. So I know that this is a purposeful use of my time. Um, and so on time, the other thing he said, which is like not a new concept, but that, oh, this is, is this right? Inven no. Inventory? Nope, it's backwards. You see, I knew it was going to happen. He said, so forget that. Some of us can read backwards. So <laughs> intentions are golden. I'll be golden. golden. Thanks. I'm trying, I'm trying to make this work without, you know, a cool setup. 
the surprise um, the idea is that uh, what happens is, is Zoom will mirror your camera for you. So you look like everything's backwards, but everybody else sees you as you are. So does this, is this that's, backwards? That's backwards. That's backwards. backwards. No. Yes. <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of all that work. Wait, so I, listen, I spent like 40 minutes trying to get this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what did that do to your energy? Yeah, I was happy to do it, but I was a little perplexed. Like, wait a minute, I really don't. I know that Rabbi does videos where he's holding up cards and he's not writing those cards backwards. Okay, so there's a lesson in this. This is poetry in motion. So you can turn off the mirroring. It's also an exercise for our brains. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. Keep them sharp. Um, so the next backwards card says that your time <laughs> is your inventory. <laughs> Your time is your inventory, and not to get too capitalistic and framework, but like seriously, you've got a thing to give, and it's your time, and you only get what you get, right? And that your energy is your currency, so how you spend it matters greatly. Um, we're not out here just like throwing around 50 bucks willy-nilly, and so the way that we use our time should be really cautious. Um, I feel like I should, somebody should screenshot this, Rabbi. I feel like you could use this. <laughs> I think you're doing you're doing beautifully. I love it. It's amazing. I'm gonna put it on my wall. Oh, hold it up backwards, <laughs> facing you, and then we can read it. Oh yeah. You're, oh, through the paper to the other side. Yeah, we can. Oh, sure can. Look at that. Oh, it's like magic. Yeah. It's like appearing. Absorb, transform, <laughs> resurrect. <laughs> it was backwards when it was forwards too, so dyslexia, you know, is what it is. <laughs> so, so this is, this is my one offering, and the, the way that it fits in, actually first, do, are there any, like, questions now that you know what it was really supposed to say well there's a comment in the chat to the positive of your backwards it says actually by writing the info backwards makes it interesting to read you are catching our attention so bravo thank you shmooley i was a teacher didn't even know it oh tricks <laughs> hey yeah and actually transferring uh, all that uh energy towards by writing backwards Mm -hmm. I receive it. Thank you. <laughs> so my hope is that this kind of a framework can help us think about um, the year that we've just experienced. I know that a lot of us have still had a lot of remote um, experiences, and yet there's still been a lot of energy exchange. And so part of Part of my hope in sharing this at the end of December is that as you reflect on the year that we've had, you can reassess where you have purpose, where you maybe need to call some things into question with your purpose, the relationships that maybe need to be gently held in a position of pause, um, but also to think about this space together. Um, and if you have a sense of what energetic, I even made a, a graphic of the movement of the energy. So, like, if you're not here to absorb today, what what energy state do you find yourself in? Um, am I making sense? Just yes. Right? Yes, honey. We are. Yes. We're absorbing it all. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And and transferring some, some gems things. Well, can I ask a question? Of course. Why why is it in a circle? Like. Is, is there a, a process to it that it's in a circle? So I this was how this was my adaptation of this that like you know for example this um, well I guess we'll just keep on Saturday service. So like I said, I thought that my intention was to come and exchange some energy and to absorb some energy, but maybe by the time donuts hits. I'll have a one-on-one -on -one with someone and there's some grief that I can help to transform. And so I might be jumping between energy states, even in one interaction, but 
because I can name at least one of these, right. I know that I'm not wasting my precious currency. I sweep. And so it's just to indicate that it's you may not have one. It may not be one thing. It may be all of them. It may be two of them. Something like this. So it's a continuous circle of change. Is that what you mean? Yeah, back and forth, left okay. and right, just movement. Um, Got it. Thank yeah, you. just movement. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Anything else out in the sphere? My sense was that uh, we show up perhaps to absorb, but by virtue of exactly what I'm doing now, we're exchanging. And exchange is a part of, of the system that can reinforce my own absorbing and perhaps contributes to others absorbing as well. But we also function through exchange in a very profound way in this group with the open microphones. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and well, in my case, at least, as I absorb, I, I keep uh, transferring uh, what I'm learning, absorbing uh, uh, here or wherever, in any uh, situation that I may encounter. So it's a learning experience, but it's also <clears throat> a chance for me to teach or uh, uh, teach by example, you know, of how I react to things or, I mean, if they're positive, of course. So, yeah, it's a continual inter-exchange of, of, uh, of energy. Yeah, and Shmuley, that's, yeah, thank you both for sharing that. And <clears throat> the other thing it makes me think of is I've heard, like, pastors and other energetic healers talk about the difference between a healthy cell and a cancerous cell, and a cancerous cell is one that just gets stuck in one state of reception and it never has any, there's no reciprocity. And so that's a big word for me generally in life, trying to find balance. But what you said is so key that, yeah, you want to, we and so part of this exercise, too, as however you hold it, if you hold it beyond today, is to think about what thing, like, how are you How are you getting things back out? Are you getting things back out? If not, what's underneath that? What kinds of shifts can happen so that you have a more two-way street or four-way street kind of thing going on? Because if you're just receiving or if you're just giving, right, You we, we know how this story ends, and it doesn't end in your favor. Congested. That's the word. Yeah, congested. I know, I could not see who said that, but yes. I think it was Emily. I bet. Emily, was that you? Yep. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, congested. Actually, I, I heard from, from a rabbi that uh, according to the, the, the Kabbalah or Kabbalah, um, what happened to the world or to creation was that it was receiving but never uh, uh, transferring. And that's where a big explosion uh, happened in, into creation. And that's where there's so it's in, uh, bits and pieces of grace or, or of, of light around the world. And now it, our purpose is to gather that light and, and make the world hold again. So we're receiving yeah. and transferring. I, um, oh yeah, please, please. I thought of a of a of a personal um, experience of what you're talking about. I think I noticed that sometimes I don't feel well. Everybody knows that <laughs> I've been kind of ill lately. And the thing that is so wonderful is that when I'm with people. When I, I talked to Larry yesterday, Brian, and it was a wonderful conversation. And when I'm engaged on Zoom, when I'm in my improv or the acting classes or rehearsal with Rita, I am, because when we've got this, this energy transfer going on, I don't think about one thing hurting or feeling crummy. And that is the example I think that you're getting at that when we are fulfilling the purpose of just transferring our energies to each other in just such a loving way, it, it heals and it, it, it changes the structure of what we are. 
that make any sense? All yeah. that sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I find it just the most wonderful thing to be with people to, to, and hopefully I'm giving somebody an outlet to like, let's, let's release what we don't need and let's, let's just share ourselves with each other and, and then we, we, we create that third element of the us and that bubble of, of beauty. I like that, Shirley. Okay, that's, I'm, I'm through. I just thought I would <laughs> summarize some of what I think you're saying. That's great. Yeah, yeah thank you, Shirley. And I, I suspect, um, I think I've said this in different ways, but when I, I do a lot of like listening, I'm listening for patterns when folks, when I'm here, um, just as like, that's a way that I show group care is like trying to get a sense of where we're at t together. And I think what you just explained might also be a lot of the experience that other folks have of this space, which is why they keep showing up, right? Like you've had a, cr a, sh a shitty week, you've had a difficult morning, and then you're here and this back and forth, whether it's during this hour block or the post post service stuff, the healing really emerges by the time your Saturday is finished. Um, so someone please correct me, I'm projecting. Amen. You're, you're not projecting, you got it right. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks. Um, so in, in line with this sort of energy exchange, I, I come from traditions that often call them prayers of the people and that that these times when we say the names of folks who are celebrating or in a space of need, that those be times for this kind of exchange to happen in whatever way makes sense. Um, so Joe, if you wouldn't mind, I'm gonna ask you to read um, those folks off and we can we can do some of that energy transfer in whatever non-woo-woo <laughs> but meaningful <laughs> serious way makes sense so we can love on our community members. I'll read as non-woo-woo as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have Katie, Jocelyn, Jocelyn's mom, Ken, Joe, happy, me and my husband, um, Betsy Morrow, cousin Amy, Derek, Ian, who is Derek's son, Chad, Margaret, who is Alex's mom, Carol, who is Lee's mom, Abby, who is Stephen's daughter, there's flooding in British Columbia, uh, for the folks who are having challenging times because it's the holidays in December, Christina Post, Monica Metzler, Jeffrey Williams, Amy, Eve, Anne, Hillary, Joe Biden's Conference on Democracy, Democracy in the States as Elsewhere, and Eileen DeToma texted me right before we started and her COVID is actually getting worse. Oh dear. Yeah. We need to add the people in the Midwest after last night. Amen to that. Thank you, Harold. Yeah. Thank you for lifting um, those names up. We, we, we hear you, we feel you, we are holding you all. Okay. So the next thing I was wondering about us doing is just a quick um, check-in, maybe not quick, I don't know, a check-in um, of how you all are reflecting about the Saturday services this year. I, Rabbi asked a question, and this was maybe weeks ago, to me we were chatting, and he said, like, how do you know that you're getting what you need? And I thought that was a really great question. Um, and it just it inspired me to go a little bit further and think about like, yeah, how, how, do, how does Rabbi know if he's giving you what you need? How do you know you're getting what you want? Um, and so to simplify, I, I think maybe one to just start and open up the, the speaking for folks to share. What were moments that were highlights for you this year? in the services, maybe it was a lesson, maybe it was a moment, just some things that help us get a sense of what's what's pinging the best parts of you. Um, so you can take some time to, to hear from you all about 
yeah, like what went well? What's what are you taking with you as a general participant of the service? Okay, the one one thing that I'm thinking of is just knowing that you all are there, knowing knowing that like on eleven o'clock at any on any weekday I can uh, check in, I can have people that I check in with. Uh, uh, you know, and there, there's always somebody there, uh, and on eight o'clock and nine o'clock on on Saturdays and so on. I mean, I I sometimes uh, you know in this in this time of uh, of being in in my own house most of the time and sometimes lonesome and and you wish that there was some a neighbor that you could feel free enough to to stop by any time and uh, this gives us that thank you Betsy and I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm at you I'm, I'm gonna write down some of the things you all say so thank, thank you for sharing that Betsy I'm gonna just kind of build on what Betsy said I'm uh, I'm anything but lonely I got um, four other folks in this house and I'm teaching in a crowded high school um, but I sometimes feel like the world is full of lunatics and I love to come to this safe harbor and just hear people speaking from their hearts and caring for one another. And it just week after week, it fills my cup. So thank you, everybody. And we, I, if we want to like thank each other, like y'all think, yeah, we can thank you, Lord. Thank you, Betsy. <laughs> mm -hmm. For me, it is learning to have gratitude, gratitude for little things. Uh, and this group is anything but a little thing for me. Uh, you guys are my lifeline, and that's a uh, in a literal, literal thing. But learning to be grateful for the little things I have in my life and being satisfied with what I have without always looking for more. Thank you, Ray. For me, um, I don't know whether to talk now or, or not. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, you're up. Go for it. <laughs> For me, um, this is the only congregation I have ever belonged to and come back week after week. Uh, and partly it's because, well, it makes sense to me. The things that we talk about that Rabbi Rod Brian for, sometimes those little drawings might work for me, but that's different. <laughs> but, um, and to me, the only hope to, for me to make a change in what I don't like happening is by participating in, in groups like this and spreading it on, that it's all, it, it, you know, I've got this Martin Luther thing, and it's all connection and the connection here is what you wrote about and um, I'm very thankful for it would you rather that rabbi wrote backwards instead of drew little is it sorry Mary? I want to say your name Yep. It's the non-judgmental aspect of so many people. Um, I'll be on screen. Um, there's often nods or thumbs up showing that there's participation and listening. So that non-judgmental listening um, on a weekly basis is very comforting. And knowing it's there is a, is a lot of people accept. <laughs> For me, it, it's the, that every, every, I look forward to Saturday morning, Saturday service, 
because it calls out the very best in me from all of you. I think we only ever get to see the best in you, Emily. That's true. I was thinking that the the um, what has been the most wonderful gift I've gotten from this service is that there are have been profound moments where my perspective has been opened, and I think that that's an ongoing. Um, a benefit or, or a moment in, in this group is that we, we get to um, actually alter you have some my of our phone. mindsets that have not served us as well as they as, as we would like in, in our lives. And uh, uh, this group oh, yep. see wonderful ways of looking at, at life and ourselves and each other in a new light. <clears throat> Thank you, Shirley. So, I'm I'm sure there are more, but Shirley, your, what you said made me want to ask this question. Can folks talk about the scale of discomfort as we do this growing and learning and stretching? Like, if ten is like, you know, you're in those awkward moments in meetings and like you like you might throw up because what's happening is like so uncomfortable, and one is just like. And, you know, little gnats trying to help you find patience. What, how uncomfortable has it been for you to be pressed and challenged to bring your best self consistently, to, to open your mind? Um, does anyone have any memories of being uncomfortable and care to sh no. share about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. I'm asking. It's a. It's a. Yeah, that's a brave one. I and so I'm. I'm asking because for a couple of reasons. Is there? Is that a no, like a collective? No, there's no one who wanted to share. Um. Well. Well. In in my case, um. One one problem that I had, or sometimes still have, uh, at times, but it's, uh, coming from from a religious experience where. Uh, knowing it all and knowing it well was key. And uh, that at, at sometimes led to legalism. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we're better because we, 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 we have the truth and you don't, you know. Uh, and in my mind, I needed to, to know it well, very well, because otherwise if I, if I had any doubts, I was doomed. Now, after being here, sitting and, and, and learning and listening and, and sharing with the, all of you, uh, I, I found the freedom of saying, hey, listen, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't know it all and I don't need to know it all and, and, and it's okay. And I found, like I've told Rabbi Brian several times, that this is my tribe, and I'm, I'm, I'm free to be me, and I'm free to say, hey, I just don't know. And I'm happy with that. Thank you, Shirley. Yes, I think that the thing that makes this group so special is we are non judgmental, and we just accept people as they are. And thank God for that. And however, however you worship he, she, it, them, you know, like that. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. Um, yeah, Joe, go for it. So um, one of the struggles I know for me I've had is because, because, like Shmuley was saying, because I came from a very scheduled, ritual um organized pattern my brain wanted to make this a ritual organized pattern which it it, 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 it it is sort of in that you know we do it regularly at the same time every week but it but it isn't but I found myself projecting onto this crew some of the stuff that came from the ritual organized structure thing 
And so I have to unlearn, like I have to tell myself, this is not the same, Joe. These are not those people. You're not sitting, like, and I, that surprised me that I had to undo. Like, I didn't think this would trigger that, if that makes sense. But it, it did against my will. Like, my subconscious started, like, um, I don't know. I, not picking, not, not. Right. If my subconscious just started doing some of the judgmental things I would have done in a few, even though I didn't want to do them. And so I've had to, like, pay attention to that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Anything else on discomfort? Talk There's a comment in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry said it's all comfortable oh okay well thanks I'm, I'm happy for you around that point um and i, and I you know you know you, well so i'll just not everybody's as lucky as you rob um this has been a year of tremendous losses for me alienation of family loss of social network and this group has been a huge source of support What else could you want? So, um, thank you all um, for sharing those things. Um, I, I can tell you with certainty that if I get to do any more services, I will probably circle back to a better way to hold those growing pains because to explore what's happening, partly because and maybe this is just like my selfish or like um, like skewed bias um, perspective, but I find that um, common points of struggle and strife can be an interesting and helpful balance to a healthy community. So, for example, if we know that there are there's more than just Joe and myself, I, I've shared some things too, like coming from pretty organized traditional religion space, religious spaces, if we know that those things are happening, we can take better care to look after one another when we're falling into a pattern that we don't want to be in. But without knowing those things, we can replicate a lot of behaviors that did not serve us in those spaces. And now we're in a space where we have a collective agreement, a collective, a mutual understanding, a mutual value for it. And so but without naming those things, they do stay they do stay around, just kind of flailing about in the shadows. And I think it can be an act of great care to figure out how to face some of that shadow space so that we can, you know, demystify the boogeyman. Not not to demean or or judge or uh, talk badly of the spaces that we've come from because we are who we are for better or worse because of these experiences and we don't want to reinvent a shitty wheel <laughs> and so we have we have to be clear about what works what doesn't work when does rabbi push a, t a soft spot when does a guest host push a soft spot and why when do we in our small groups push on those soft spots like what's really going on outside of the oh we love each other this is great all of these things um i hope i'm making some sense mm -hmm. Um, Rob, I see you've got your hand up. Embrace the boogeyman. Embrace uh, the boogeyman. Yeah, that's, that's a, that should the be a boogeyman teacher. into your heart. Embrace know the that we are all the boogeyman. <laughs> and that it's okay. And that the spirit of love begins with us. And doesn't end until... Actually, it doesn't end. There is no ending. It is infinite. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I like that idea of, of embracing the boogeyman, Rob. Um, it's amazing what happens when you embrace that boogeyman. Yeah. Take embrace him in doesn't and just... Okay. Comfort him. Sometimes Make him you fall in love with him. Oh, my God. There's a couple more good... Um, Good comments in chat. It says, when it's so difficult to share or give, it's not easy to receive. 
sometimes I just can't share as it's too emotional. So I can't reach out and get what I'm hoping for. Hmm. And I, okay. I, yeah, I just wondered if anybody else struck. I mean, I struggle with that too. There's a, I think there's I something, think. I think there's something special about this group that Brian has been able to create a safe space community so that we can sit here and say all of these lovely connected things about each other and in that space we are allowed to look at difficult questions and and feel that we can talk openly about the difficult questions because we have a community in which it is safe to do that. And I don't know what his magic is and how he pulled it off, but it seems to be the gift that we have. That's the boo-boo-boo of this group. I, I have a question. If we embrace the boogeyman, is the boogeyman still the boogeyman? <laughs> is, he, is, is he back there? And no, we are the boogeyman. boogeyman. Well... Boogeyman sits in the back of our subconscious, just like Joe said, and we try to put our past onto the future, and sometimes that gets us in a big ditch. So we, if we grab the boogeyman and we hold on to him and say, you ain't going into my future because you're not helpful, then uh, I'm not going to hug him so much because he's going to wreck my future if I'm not careful. Uh, there's there's a story about uh, this, this person who... Um, who was supposed to uh, uh, go through a trial, and, and part of the trial was to open the door, but behind that, that door was a tiger. And uh, shaking, she opened the door, and the tiger ran to him, and he couldn't run anywhere. He just stood there. And when the tiger got closer to him, he started purring like a little cat. And he petted him. And that's us meeting the, the boogeyman, you know, um, and the, 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 for example, in my case, I, uh, I did this uh, um, thing called the Enneagram, and I appear to, to be a, 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 a somebody who is very, very scared about everything and very doubtful about everything, even, even about myself. Um, and, um, I learned that the best thing to do is not to try to convince myself and not to be afraid of doubts either, but just to accept that I'm not right at all the time and, and that I need to take the world as it is and take myself as, as I am. I'll never forget one of the first things that uh, uh, Robert Bryan told me uh, when we were chatting face to face, he said, you're okay. <laughs> I just stared at him. It's like, huh? He said, well, your face tells me that you're not okay, but you're okay. And uh, yesterday, actually, I was at this this meeting, and, and uh, uh, the person was uh, sharing something. And it really touched my heart. It, and, and I had to look deep down in myself and say, yeah, I'm okay. And I am I'm I'm, it's okay for me to embrace myself with all my doubts and, and, and all my fears, but I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, I'm yes, gonna has her hand have, up. have just share, and then we're going to do announcements. Um, so just to, just because I'm watching the time. Um, Jess, what you got? Hi, thank you. Um, I just was going to touch back on um, to what Nikki was saying in the chat uh, about kind of the vulnerable nature of this community. And um, I feel like that's one of the most beautiful things that we have here. And one thing that really helps me uh, to be able to, you know, process what we're talking about is when we drop into the small groups or when we have our time in donut room or even, you know, in poetry room. Sometimes we'll just have these great conversations or we'll just be talking about something completely different and it will come back. What we, what we did in service will come back in a way that is more personal. So I feel like when we take those little, um, you know, small group uh, respites from the main group, I see a lot of um, 
you know, processing and growth and people really developing what we're doing in the main group when we drop back into the smaller rooms. Because sometimes it can be a little uh, intimidating or a little bit too vulnerable in like a main space. But when you get into those smaller rooms and you just have a handful of people with you, um, for me personally, it's a lot easier to kind of process those things then. Thank you. I just wanted to drop in and, and see that's something that really definitely helps me. Thank you, Jess. And thank you, Nikki, for sparking that. I think um, you sparked something really, really, truly true. Um, so thank you both for sharing those things. I um, think one of the things that about this group is that we're all here because we want to be here. We are not part of something that is a requirement to be here. There's no obligation. And there's the opportunity to, for everybody to be the person that they are without having to follow a particular script or read it, whatever. And so I think that that's one of the beauties of this group is that we are here in a respectful manner to interact with each other and to grow from that. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, Maria, um, would you like to, I'm sorry, that's a quick transition. I don't want to, I don't want to take the precious donut and small group times that come afterwards. So I'm just going to have us make a real quick pivot to announcements so that we can get you into those, those rich spaces without going over. Um, are you, Maria, are you still reading the announcements? Am I? I am. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So I'm Maria. I am today's Saturday service announcer for this Yay. Saturday, the 11th day of December, 2021. Now I'm supposed to say, whoop, holla, cheer, hooray, but I think you guys are supposed to do that. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Office hours. The Zoom crew hangs out with Rabbi Brian on Tuesdays. Join us here on Tuesdays. All are welcome. This same link, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Raffle tickets. Many people who have attended the service have gotten raffle tickets for acts of love, for surprising themselves by being kind and or patient. Special raffle tickets for Roz and Amy, Betsy Ann, R.B. himself, and Ann Zed. Clubhouse. The ROTB Community Clubhouse is a private place to be in touch and share with other <laughs> ROTB peers. And it will be open on Christmas Day. If you are looking for a place to hang out on 1225, to chat with some people, stop on by. Bonus page. If you didn't get it last week, all of the quotes used in the service are available on the bonus page. Alex is going to stick that link in the chat. Um, RRB's notes. If you are new and want some review, <laughs> RRB's candy sheets are available on Etsy. Graphics and words to remind you of some of the great tools discussed in the services. Link in the chat. YouTube and Facebook. The restreaming service ROTB uses reported about 20 hours of live watching per week in the last four weeks, which means there are about 20 people watching this on YouTube, the ROTB.org website, and Facebook. RB says, howdy folk, get a link for a front row Zoom link when you sign up for the 77% weekly newsletter at ROTB.org. The Shekinah Group, if you'd like to join the ROTB subset who enjoy chatting about God, post in the chat and Rita will find you there. This group is wholly fun. Donations. Support this work. Support RB. Support religion outside the box. I do support. So go to ROTB.org slash donate. And another link in the chat. Talent show. It's coming up in the new year. Still looking for some variety acts. It'll be live and a bunch of fun. Post in chat if you want to be involved. James. ROTB's friend James has a birthday at the end of the month. His address is in the chat. Would you be so kind as to send him a postcard or letter? And how about a book of stamps? 
I don't think he could use Canadian stamps, but you know. <laughs> Meditation. Here's something that's great to do. Nothing. Join our beef for a 20 minute sit every day, streaming at 2 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook. And lastly, the next hour, stick around after this group for small groups. We have Deep Dive with, with Alan Kipp for people who want to take a subject and burn a hole in it. Donuts with Joe and Maria for people who want to talk about topics brought up today in the atmosphere of donuts. And the Poetry Room. If you have a poem you'd like to share or listen in, meet there in the Poetry Room. And now back to you, Afia. Good job. Amanda Gorman just has a new book. Just got it, so I wanted to read you some poems from it. Can you, Ron? Can you? Um, it's blurred out because of your uh, background. Can you hold it? There you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, she just came out this week. And it's oh, some great. She's an ins insanely great poet. Thanks. That's the poetry room. Thanks. Um. Uh, another deep breath for me. So, um, we've got nine minutes left. I do not want to tap back into things, let you all hold, hold what's good for donuts and deep dives. Um, just a, a quick reminder to be gentle with yourselves as this year winds down, as it's cold outside. Hope you move gin gingerly, drink lots of water and other delicious beverages that make you feel good in balance. Um, <laughs> and Rabbi has a thing he would like to say before we, we dip out. I just want to thank all of you. I want to, um, like, I was so, I, I was anxious that a fee of running the service and me just watching, I thought y'all might, I, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed, but I'm going to be honest. I thought 